Welcome, dear traders! You are watching a recap of the Asian session. In the morning, trading unfolded with a caution sentiment. Risk aversion prevailed. So, the stock indexes of uh, Japan, Australia and New Zealand dipped. Turmoil in the banking sector that began on March 10 surged volatility in the stock market. It had already been high for some time. The collapse of a Silicon Valley bank and the Signature Bank was the largest bank failure in the United States since the 2008 financial crisis. First Republic Bank could face the same fate. A group of several large lenders, including J.P. Morgan Chase and the Citigroup, adopted a rescue package to prevent another bank run. Something similar occurred in the European Union. Credit Suisse said it would borrow up to 50 billion Swiss francs from the Swiss National Bank. However, credit use failed to stay afloat. Switzerland's biggest bank, UBS, agreed to buy its alien rival. Therefore, the attempts to save First Republic Bank from a failure may turn out to be unsuccessful as well. After all, there are no guarantees that the measures taken to support the regional bank will be sufficient. And now traders are anticipating the upcoming Fed meeting scheduled for March 22. Earlier this month, Jerome Powell hinted at the possibility of keeping rates at a high level for a longer time. Not long ago, markets factored in a sharp rare increase by 50 basis points following upbeat data. However, after the woes in the banking sector, the odds of a such a hawkish move are rather low. The majority of the analysts expect the Fed to leave the key rate unchanged. Yet, inflation in the United States is still high. This is why the regulator is likely to raise the interest rate by a quarter point. According to the FedWatch tool, the ratio of investors betting on a pause and the rate increase of a point to 25% was almost equal today. As a reminder, last Friday the number of the later totaled almost 82%. The US dollar has been consolidating in the range of 103.60 and 104.00 since last Friday. For the US currency, the banking crisis is a bearish factor. It undermines its strength against its main rivals. Government bonds also added small gains in the morning. The euro climbed to the most against the greenback after the takeover of a credit used by UPS. As a result, the US dollar index has been declining for the third session in a row. It sank below the key level of 104 points and it was trading at 103.70 in the Asian session. Nevertheless, the US dollar is not ready to give up. The peers are still unable to regain the upper hand despite a steady drop. The Fed and the five other leading central banks announced a coordinated effort to boost the flow of the US dollar through the global financial system to keep credit flowing to households and businesses. Meanwhile, Japan can boost our stability. The Bank of Japan sticks to an ultra-loose monetary policy. Traders do not expect any surprises from the regulator. Japan's economy is slowly but surely getting back on a track. It makes the yen an attractive safe haven asset. In addition, the fiscal year ends on March 31. Capital inflows in the yen are constantly growing as the companies are converting their profits from dollars to the yen and the dollar yen pair kicked off a trading in a wide range of 130.70 and 132.70. The Japanese currency, which is sensitive to the moves of long-term U.S. treasuries, 
recouped its losses. It broke through the resistance level of 131. In the Asian session, it was trading at 130.70. Judging by its trajectory, the pair may approach the psychologically important level of 130 in the coming hours. It could also test the levels looked at the start of the year. Commodity currencies were down due to risk aversion. The Australian dollar is facing strong bearish pressure due to the chance of a banking crisis and mounting uncertainty over the Fed's rate decision. On a Monday, the RDUSD pair was rather volatile. In the Asian trade, it was hovering in the bearish corridor of 0.6667 and 0.6667. 7.44. The Aussie as a risk-sensitive currency dived to 0.6676, gradually declining. Its a downward movement could persist until the Fed meeting or even after it. No matter what decision the regulator will take, it will hardly help there to ease inflation or stabilize the banking sector. It means that the risk on sentiment could remain low, so the outer-use depend may sink to new lows. As the optimism about mitigating the banking crisis faded, the New Zealand dollar also lost its bullish bias. It traded choppily at the start of the week due to high volatility in the markets. The Kiwi dollar pair dropped to 0.6245. However, it has been trading without a clear-cut trend for the second months after the rate increase by half of a point on February 22. The quotes have been moving in the range of 0.6238 and 0.6306. Welcome, dear traders, you're watching a recap of the Asian session. In the morning, trading unfolded with a caution sentiment. Risk aversion prevailed, so the stock indexes of uh, Japan, Australia and the New Zealand dipped. And this week is going to be quite eventful. How will the situation in the banking sector develop? What rate decisions will the Fed, the Bank of England and the Swiss National Bank make? Subscribe to our channel and keep abreast of the latest market news. That's all for now. See you soon.